American Flat Track kicks off its run through the biggest and fastest tracks of all, starting with the Indian Motorcycle of Lexington Red Mile here in Kentucky. Huge crowd on hand, ready for some of the best racing action you'll find anywhere. Flat Track Motorcycle Racing. Just to recall what it was like in the beginning, let us take a quick look back, back at the turn of the century. century. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It's trials like this that have made the two-wheel little giant the tough piece of mechanism it is today. Take a look at this motorcycle. Each of today's races draws large crowds from all over the country. It's an evolution. Testing and bettering, testing and perfecting. Right up, cowboy. The wave of the future. Got a good start anyway. Yeah, and we'll see how hot I was the whole time. Every chance I get to race now, I enjoy it. What will you do? How hard are you willing to go? Will you let fear win? Or will you rise? Big one for Jeremy. And find victory. Shayna Hester hates the win. It changes the way you look at racing. has been on the podium in every race this year, but can he keep that streak alive on a totally different type of racetrack? And with Jared Meese, the ever-determined series champ, trying to claw back in the series standings. And the Harleys have been very fast this year. Can Sammy Halbert uncork his and get a victory at the Red Mile in the singles class? Dalton Gauthier, two false starts, zero points at our last race, has to bounce back and tangle with Shayna Texter, who is always fast on the miles and has a win already this season. And her brother, Corey, has been dominating in the new AFT Productions Twins class. He's looking for a three-peat today. Big crowd on hand, Jason Wygant, A.J. Allmendinger in the booth. Kristen Beat will be patrolling from the racetrack here at Kentucky. Let's look at the point standings in our AFT Twins division. You don't often see Jeremy is down 24 early. Tough start at Daytona. He's got a victory on the season. Two-time defending champion of this race and of the championships, so Jared Meese looking to rebound here at the Red Mile. Brandon Robinson sandwiched between them, a renaissance season for him. He already has two victories. He's in the title hunt as well. As we head to the Red Mile, not just a great place to race, but a great place to watch racing, so we have a big crowd on hand here in Lexington, and lots for them to see and do. Not only our three championship classes, but a band. It's been rocking all weekend. However, They've been watching the weather just as much as they've been watching the track. We've had some rain. Luckily, we got the Honda Talon, and uh, we're all hands on deck. We took that thing out to help work in the surface, and it's paid off. We're going to have some good racing despite all the rain. Talon out here would be really fun. Here's the track facts. What's it all about, AJ? One mile in length, made up of red clay. This racetrack is fun for the riders, but talking to them, they were telling me the approach to turn one and turn three are totally different. So we're really going to keep our eyes on that to see who is strong throughout the whole racetrack. And one of the riders could be strong at complete wild card. How about this? Roger Lee Hayden coming out of retirement, one of the legends, because J.D. Beach normally on that monster Estenson Yamaha is road racing this weekend. So Roger Lee's hopping on the bike and giving it a go. I've been thinking a lot about flat tracks just because you know, it's been so long since I did it, I kind of was wanting to get back to it, but I wasn't thinking maybe this soon. I was thinking maybe more down the line. And then uh, when he called me and asked me if for sure I wanted to do it, but at the same time, I was a little bit nervous because it is a mild track and I haven't rode a twin in so long. JD has given me some advice. We went cycling the other day and I was asking him all kinds of questions about, you know, how do you get off the line and like, you know, do you use the clutch and all these different questions about the bike. And he said if I had any questions, I could text him. So I'm sure tomorrow once we get going, I'll be, uh, I might have JD on speed dial. Such a great team. It's such a family thing, especially with my brother being a team manager. And uh, the teams did really well this year. I know they'd like to, you know, do better some places, but they got a race win. This weekend is uh, really special because my parents are going to be Grand Marshals. So uh, I know they're really excited about that because their roots, when we first started racing, all my brothers and even my sisters uh, raced flat track. They're excited for that and also a dollar of every ticket sales, they're going to donate to my brother's Memorial Foundation. And uh, really what that is, is we donate a lot of stuff to uh, local kids and charities at home. 
We have that memorial foundation to try to keep Mickey's uh, legacy alive. He uh, was an inspiration to a lot of people, and uh, we want to keep it going for a long time. You know, I said this earlier in the week. I can only think that, you know, my brother, you know, is looking down. He's going to have a huge smile on his face tomorrow watching us. Well, even at the highest heights of MotoGP, Nikki Hayden always kept it in the family here in Kentucky, so there's going to be a lot of people smiling. Let's send it to Kristen with more. Roger Lee Hayden is by far the fan favorite here in Kentucky, but a steep learning curve for the rider coming out of retirement tonight. He told me that they've really been struggling with tire spin, and he's personally been struggling with corner speed. He followed behind some veteran riders earlier in the day, including Johnny Lewis in qualifying. He figured out a few things, but tonight it's clear that he's really just trying to trust the process and work himself into the race, guys. Well, that will be interesting to watch. And now we get to show you exactly what it's like to battle on the miles, starting with our first semi. And what a showdown. You got Jared Mees, the champ, and the points leader, Briar Bauman, right behind him. The two factory Indian motorcycles going at it. We see here into turn one, Briar Bauman, two laps to go, trying to chase down Jared Mees. Gets in deep, way too deep. Has to lay it down, hits the air fence. Luckily, he would get up and actually restart this semi. First big error we've seen from Bauman all year in one of the first showdowns between he and me. So we'll see how quickly he can bounce back, not only physically, but even mentally from that one. They had to work on the motorcycle. It didn't look pretty, but he was good enough to get back in the race. And underway we go, and this is it. Watch this. Four wide down this stretch. Mies all the way on the inside. The five of Jake Johnson all the way on the outside, and the Yamaha Mies is just going to edge him out. Oh, mile racing is so fun when you get the draft involved, but in the end, Mies able to pull away. Steven Vanderker, we've not seen racing in quite some time, a solid ride for second, and Bauman somehow finishes fifth. There's Earl Hayden, yeah, with the old Earl's racing team, classic T-shirt, he's the Grand Marshal, that's Roger Lee's dad. Here's a battle, Vander Coy on the 20, and returning the master of the miles, Brian Smith in a great duel. Last corner, last lap, Brian Smith, Gets that horsepower down on that Kawasaki off of turn four. Does the old mile draft to the line. Beats Jared Vanderkoy for the win of semi two. Smith 2016 series champ missed a few races as they redesigned that Howerton Crosley machine. Obviously it's working well now, but just missing the main is Roger Lee. It was such a fun day. I got faster every time I went out. Uh, missed the main by one spot. You know, now I hope to do a lot more of them. So uh, it was definitely something to build on and get my feet wet and a lot to a lot to think about well, we have a lot to think about as well could the old rivals be looming for a showdown jared mees and brian smith win the semis can briar bauman bounce back and what about our singles class shana texter is always fast in the miles can she use this race to bring her red bull ktm back up toward the front of the series standings stay with us American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. If you go down, call Russ Brown. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. Roof Systems AFT Singles Class. Here are the point standings. Jesse Janish on the strength of TT victories is out front, but we're gonna reset this whole thing on a mile track, which we have not raced on at all this year. And that means a lot of attention on Shayna Texter, who's always strong on these big tracks. Checkered flag, Shayna Texter takes her first win of the season and the first win ever for the Red Bull KTM team. You know, it's always that first win of the year. You gotta get that, you know, off your back. And uh, you can kind of, I guess, cruise a little bit easier in a sense that you have a win for the year. Now it's just, it's all about trying to repeat and, and get back up front. So I've been overall pretty satisfied, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting to the miles and stretch the legs on the KTM. You know, I know the guys back at the shop's been doing a lot of, a lot of homework this year uh, to make sure the bikes are good and 100% and ready to, uh, you know, attack each and every weekend. A lot of people don't realize, I I've never rode a KTM 450 until this year, and, and Dan, you know, he's got his notebook, and we're able to use some of our notes uh, from the years, but, you know, the teams, it's so new to the sport, you know, Dan and I are literally the only two that have any flat track experience. You know, we're trying to get the team um, and, and the crew back up at the factory up to, up to par with things, and we're constantly making changes, so for us to get a win so early, you know, it, it was huge, you know, and uh, hopefully we can just carry that momentum and, and continue on. And, uh, you know, I, I expect Dan and I should be on the podium, at least one of us, every weekend. I 
just like going fast. You know, I like the uh, the adrenaline rush of going, you know, wide open and, uh, you know, playing a little bit of the draft game with the boys. You know, it's just, it's fun. It's, you know, a little bit of a twist of what we've been doing lately on the, on the little groove tracks. But yeah, I mean, really, I just, I enjoy going fast. At Red Mile, I, you know, I, I want to win. You know, I've podiumed there in the past two years that we've gone there. So for me, the next step is, is winning the Red Mile. Um, you know, it's going to be really cool for me. I'm going to have a bunch of family come into that event. It's, you know, it's not too far. I think it's like about 10 hours from home. So, you know, it would definitely be special to, to get that first mile out of the way and uh, to get a win. So let's show you the qualifying highlights, AFT singles storylines. Great battle between two title contenders right here. Dalton Gauthier in the 122. It's go time on the inside of Mikey Rush, and that got close. Puts a little shoulder on him getting into turn three. Mikey Rush comes off of turn four here. Lots of power in that Honda down the front straight away here. As we keep talking about, that mile draft to the line. Mikey Rush got him, winner of semi one. Oh, I just love the draft to the finish. You never know if it's better to lead off the corner, but you started in second for Rush. Second ended up being first. Janish, your points leader, showing he can ride well even on the big mile tracks. Finishes solid third ahead of Dan Bromley, your series champ. Another great battle in semi two. Shayna Texter moves to the lead inside of Ryan Wells. You had Tanner Dean early on in there on the number 38. Kevin Stallings would join this group. And here's the battle to the finish. Texter in the draft, able to get around Wells and just hold off Stallings. Practically a photo finish here at the horse track. And that really sets the stage of what should be some dramatic racing in the main tonight when we take all the talent from semi one and two and join them together. So now we're ready. The crowd is packing the grandstands, ready for this main event in the singles division. And considering we haven't raced a mile all year, it's hard to guess a winner. Yeah, Mikey Rush, he's been so close this season trying to get his first AFT singles class victory. Shana Texture, rough TT stretch. He's really got to be strong on the miles. Dalton Gauthier really needing a bounce back race after not making the main event last race. So the Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorney's starting lineup. Gautier is the third pick on the grid. Let's send it back to Kristen Beat with one more update on the Yamaha man. In the singles class, the paddock calls it mile weight on a 450 body mass of X horsepower. This week, Ryan Wells lost 10 pounds to improve his mile package and program. Ryan's 5'8 and plateaus around 156. Today, he weighed in at 146. He said he's been biking twice a day, trimming water weight. I asked him where his energy is at. He said he feels great, and that weight he shed will help lock in to the draft. He's hoping to close the size advantage between him and Shayna Texter. Sounds a little like being on the wrestling team. Got to take off all the pounds to try to win because horsepower to weight's big on a mile track. Here we go, the Red Mile in the singles division. Oh, and Gote, violent launch. That's not going to help him. Looks like Janish going to try to make a good run on the outside. No, Shana Texter, but she drifts wide. Still able to hold the lead. Janish in second. Shana Texter not known for her great starts, but gets one here. Trying to stretch it out early on the rest of the field and run away with this thing. Curious to see what Janice, the TT specialist and the points leader, can do on the big track. Right now he's in second, but look at how many riders and how many lines there are challenging him for second place. American flat track racing mile. This is what it's all about. Five wide down the back straightaway. Shana Texter leading on the first lap here. Battle for second. Dalton Gauthier, Mikey Rush down the inside. And they're going to try to take the measure of Jesse Janish. Rush, he was in a rush, had to make some moves early. He did it. He's got the Richie Morris racing Honda up to second. Then it's Gauthier and Dan Bromley, who has gotten terrible starts all year long. Oh, we have a pass for the lead already. Mikey Rush not wasting any time going all the way to the lead. Mikey Rush trying to set the tone for this race. Get out early on Shana Texter. And what's interesting is a lot of times in the mile, they don't do that because leading early, well, they can just draft right back past you. Let's see if Texter pulls. Yes, she goes to the inside. Got Gautier right behind her on board. And there it is, immediately takes the lead back and Rush keeps fighting. We're gonna see this all race, the battle back and forth, really a chess match. Where can I pass the other rider? Where's my bike the strongest? Can I get the rider at the line? Look at this draft down the back straight away. Mikey Rush, right back by Shana Texter. All right, so that's three passes between the two of them, three laps into the race. 
Jote right there, the 16 of Tristan Avery in the hunt, and Bromley on the number one. Now, Bromley, one of the tallest riders out here, he's really got to work on the aerodynamics, really has to tuck down low on that KTM. Ooh, do you think they've broken the draft? They've got a little gap on him. Dan Bromley into turn three. That previous lap got in wide, trying to make up the gap already. He's wide again. So is Tristan Avery, the front three here between Rush, Texter, Gautier, starting to stretch it on everybody. And yet another pass. Rush gets around Texter, and Texter gets back around Rush. And Gautier taking it all in in third. Oh, this is awesome. Now the onboard is Rush going to try to make the pass again. Unbelievable. You know, Jason, something I just noticed there on Shayna Texter when she upshifted, it was a big drop in gear. That, that little bit of loss of speed as she went to the top gear, that'll be interesting to see if that plays out the rest of the race. Rush was able to overtake her there. Meanwhile, this battle between the 16 of Avery and the one of Bromley, they have managed to do it. They bridged the gap. They've gotten close to the lead trio, and you've got the 94 of Wells in the hunt as well. Dalton Gautier down the inside of Shayna Texter up to second, moving Shayna Texter back to third. It'll be interesting to see what she does from here. More with Kristen on Shayna Texter. Shayna Texter said she is absolutely feeling right back at home here in Kentucky on the mile, telling me, I know I can win here. The uh, Red Bull KCM they brought is clicking with this track. Everything in line for Shayna Texter tonight. And somehow, it's worked out. She's gone from third to first almost immediately. Now it's Rush, Gote following her. Bromley has finally put his machine clearly in front of Avery for a clean fourth. Can he get in this mix and start making passes? On board here with Mikey Rush on his Honda. He shows every time Shayna Texter gets around him, he doesn't want to follow. He immediately want to, wants to get back to the lead. Shayna Texter having none of it going back to the lead into turn one. I love how this second pack has caught the lead group. Let's call it seven riders now battling for the number one position. Wells, Bromley, Avery, and Kevin Stallings of the 99. The tail end of the group, but you can make passes quickly. Can Stallings keep moving up? Rush keeps moving back around Texter again. Mikey Rush to the lead right now. It's a bit of a cat and mouse game, trying to figure out where they're the strongest. Off a of turn four here, Shayna Texter's going to see, can she get around Mikey Rush before the start finish line? That's what they're going to find out over the next five to six laps here. Oh, fantastic racing at the Red Mile. Back and forth, the top three. They've each had a shot at it, and it's only going to get better as we get close to the end. Fantastic race for the lead unfolding here at the Indian Motorcycle of Lexington. Red Mile, the 52 of Shayna Texter and the 15 of Mikey Rush have swapped the lead back an uncountable number of times. And you've got Dalton Gautier third, staying close. Ryan Wells, Dan Bromley, good race behind them, fourth and fifth. Any one of these riders could win it. Dalton Gautier, a big mistake in the middle of one and two there. He lost all kinds of time to the lead duo here. He's going to have to do a lot with that group behind him to go up and make the gap up that he just lost. Yeah, because Ryan Wells trying to get him. And now Dan Bromley way wide. All the work Bromley did to try to get close to the leaders. He's giving it up. Nothing changing up front. Every time you look at Rush and Texter, they're passing each other. You know, it's interesting, Jason. We were just riding on board there with Mikey Rush on his Honda. His upshift there wasn't that big of a drop of a gear. Is that going to play a difference in how this race finishes? I'll tell you, wants to make a difference. The 94 of Ryan Wells, he's got that distance in Yamaha into third, taking advantage of the mistake of your former series leader, Gautier. No, Gautier's coming right back on him. It's a four-way battle right now for third, but these two riders, Shayna Texter, Mikey Rush, they're the ones that are going to battle out for this win. Yeah, they've broken everybody else, and everyone looking to take advantage Jesse Janish, the TT specialist, a totally different type of racetrack, was your points leader coming into this one. He is now in 11th place. So Rush could even be looking at the points lead, depending on how this shakes out. But right now, the focus is on trying to hold off Shayna, who's going to make another run on the backstretch. I can promise you, Mikey Rush, 
doesn't care about the points at all at this moment. He wants his first singles victory. He's been so close all year. This is his opportunity with one to go coming to the white flag. Oh, he was second in our last race behind Janice and he was so frustrated with that. So now the chess match, the final move begins. The white flag is out. It's down to two riders, Rush and Texter. Does Shayna want to take the lead, you think, on this backstretch, or is she going to wait to the front? Well, it's interesting right there. She wasn't able to get to the, the lead at the start-finish line. Maybe she knows that. Her opportunity might be down this back straightaway. She's going to have to make a big move. She's got a draft on him into turn three. Well, she does not take the lead. Whether she wanted it or not, it didn't happen. That battle behind for the podium continues to rage. But here we go at a turn four. Texter's trying to set up. Can she get close enough, and then can she find the line? A little bit of a gap right now for Rush. Here comes the final stretch. And nothing going for Texter. Mikey Rush has his first win of 2019. Where did Kevin Stallings of the 99 come from? He passed everybody in that final straightaway. I think he just stole a podium with that. That was great racing. That was awesome. That's what AFT mile racing is all about. Close finishes. Kevin Stallings from seventh to third in the last corner for the podium. <laughs> Unbelievable. Gautier probably wanted a podium, but fourth after scoring zero points the last race. Still a good bounce back. Wells ends up fifth. And there you see Janish, 11th. Not what the points leader wanted in this one. Let's send it to Kristen. Mikey, your first career American flat track win in the singles class. This is huge for you tonight, especially on the mile. You told me earlier in the day you were hungry for this win. You wanted the win. You got it tonight. How did you outrace Shayna Texter in those final laps? And take me through that final pass. I don't know, but she's one bad chick, that's for sure. Um, I don't know. I just put my head down. We had a really good, clean, nice race, and I love racing like that, nice and clean. And we were, we were going hard, but like I said, I, want, I wanted this win, not only for me, for my team. These guys worked their tails off. Richie Morris. My mechanics, uh, James Hart, Shane Hill, they work their tails off. So it's I, this wins for them, basically. And my American Honda engine is, you guys did a great job on that. So it was a hell of a runner. And we, uh, I don't know, I just put my head down and just try to stay patient and not make uh, mistakes in the corners, for sure. 31-year-old out of San Jose, California, only three points down. First career victory, make up a, a chunk of points on Jesse Janisher. Shayna Texter finished second, made up some points, but she still got 53 points to go. Send it down to Kristen with Shayna. Shayna, just a moment ago, despite finishing second, you said that you were bummed. I mean, how are you feeling following this race, and how, how do you build on this? Yeah, I'm just bummed for the team. You know, they, they gave me a great bike cable winning, and uh, it went down to, to a little bit of a turn three, four mistake on my part, spinning up a little bit too much. Uh, felt like I had Mikey lined up exactly where I wanted him to uh, propel to the victory. So to come in second, you know, I'm so happy with it, but, uh, you know, I definitely want that victory. And definitely wanting that podium is the man on the right, Kevin Stallings, and he did it by passing four riders in the final turn and the run to the checker. So good job by him to steal that podium. Next up, after a great singles race, what's it going to be like when we put the production twins division out there? 65 Corey Texter, Shayna's brother, two for two so far this year. Can he win on the mile? You're watching American Flat Track on NBCSN. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. Be legendary. By Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. American Flat Track's production twins class. First time we've had a full championship in this circuit. This is bikes that you can take off the showroom floor. None of the factory efforts out here. So no one knows exactly what's going to happen, but Corey Texter building up a bit of a legacy, winning the first two and getting out front here. James Raspoli with his problems. Texter's challenge would come from the flying tomato, Colby Carlisle, right there. Yeah, Corey Texter's been strong all year, really showing with this production-based class how good of a rider he is three in a row. Bit of a rejuvenation for him. He's on a Yamaha Carlisle as well. Ben Lau takes third on a Kawasaki. Ryan Vars, Varnes and Kevin Stallings round out the top five. So different racetracks, same winner. Corey Texter still on fire. Over the years, you know, me and Colby haven't seen eye to eye, but I have a lot of respect for him. He's a great rider. And, man, this MT-07, I can't say it enough. I love this bike. We were struggling all day, and I was 
I was a little nervous about this main event. I wasn't sure how it would go, but just um, lately this season, I'm just trying to trust my instincts more and just rely on what I know and not overthink things, and it's paying off. Well, here are some riders that know things. Sammy Halbert and Jared Vanderkoy. A great battle between the Harley Davidson teammates for a podium. The last time the Twins raced, this is at the SoCal Half Mile, and Halbert put it up on the box. Let's get to know the very popular veteran. Hi, I'm Sammy Halbert. I'm 31 years old. I ride the number 69 factory Harley Davidson XG750. So I'm from Graham, Washington, the beautiful Pacific Northwest, but I thought it was time to make a move, so I just bought a house in Tallahassee, Florida. Florida made great sense to me, the Sunshine State. I just wanted to change things up, go somewhere warm that I could train year-round and really just elevate my training program. One of my favorite ways to train is to hit the mountain bike trails. It's just a blast and you're battling traction kind of like on the flat track bike. A lot of balance and endurance goes into it. You can really push yourself out there and keep it fun. For racing flat track, it's important to have a strong core, good endurance, and a really strong upper body. I do what I can to stay on top of that and push the limits and mix it up a little bit so it doesn't get old. I like working out at the gym, but it's pretty hard to park a big van there. Overall, I'm loving Florida. can ride my bike every day and practice wheelies. Being able to race flat track for a living has been a huge blessing for me. I came from racing out of the back of a school bus, competing against the factory Harley team, which was the prestigious position to have. To get the job riding for Harley Davidson is like a dream come true for me, especially at a time when there's a huge opportunity to get Harley Davidson back on top in flat track. It would mean a lot right now, so the goal is firmly set on that. Look at the factory Harley. They have made big strides for 2019, and Halbert trying to show it. Paris half mile this year was pretty rad. I knew I was battling for an epic win for the Harley team. Sammy Halbert quick to second, all over Brandon Robinson for the lead. It was only a few laps into the race, but the bike was feeling really good. I was trying to pass Brandon. It was all over his wheel. I was even able to pull up alongside of him a little bit on the front stretch. And then, unfortunately, the red came out. It's a staggered restart based on the results before the caution light came out. Spun it up on the restart a little bit, and then I'm back in seventh or eighth. Obviously, that's really frustrating, but no time to dwell on it. Just had to get back in my zone and charge back to the front. Halbert going to put the Harley XG750 on the podium in third. For everything that happened on the day, I was definitely happy that we were able to get on the podium in third and celebrate with the team. You know, I'm always trying to keep her wide open, put on a show for the fans, slamming Sammy style. Keep it twisted. All right, he's still got the slamming Sammy style in him. Could be interesting when you put it on the mile. The Harleys have been very, very fast this year, and they fast track could only help. Dunlop Tire Talk with Kristen. Tonight at the Red Mile, riders are seeing a brand new surface, but they told me earlier in the day that it's nearly identical to what they saw in 2018. So tonight, tire choice is easy for them. They're going with a tire they trust that they know will be good here on the mile, and that is the Dunlop R8. Guys? Thanks, Kristen. Okay, we are just about set. Our first mile of the year with the fastest bikes in American flat track, and it could prove pivotal in the championship. Don't go anywhere. Big crowd on hand for the Indian Motorcycle of Lexington Red Mile. We're about ready for our main event. Well, let's send it to Kristen Beat with an update and a rider we haven't seen in a while. The last time that we saw Brian Smith was in Texas after an unfavorable finish, he and the Crosley Howerton team took some time off to regroup. When we spoke earlier in the day, Brian said, during the break, we went back to what we know. We looked at our 2016 build, we referenced old notes, and we redeveloped this bike. Mentally, this is Brian Smith's season opener. Brian Smith is the strongest rider when it comes to the miles. He finished second here in 2018 to Jared Meese, and with a bike that can meet his demands here in Kentucky, he could very well visit Victory Lane for the first time in 2019. That's why they call him the master of the miles. Here is your AFT twin starting lineup. Anything stick out for you, AJ? Briar Bauman starting 10th, had a hard wreck in his semi, was fortunate enough to be able to get up, fix the bike, and make the main event. But does that linger in his head, or does he get a strong start and move forward? Sammy Halbert and this factory Harley has been quick all year and seemingly getting quicker every week. And Jared Meese, it's hard to believe to even think that he could have his back against the wall, but he's in a situation where he's got to get some wins back under his belt and momentum on his side. Here it is, our first mile race of the season. Awesome drive off the start. The man in orange, that's Vander Coy, but Brian Smith is going to lead them out of turn two, so he's back 
and back to his old tricks out front and he's got his whole buddy Jared Mees they've had some tremendous showdowns on the miles Mees is second Jared Mees big draft on the back straightaway immediately to the lead as we ride with Jared Mees on the SNS cycle on board and that's Bauman, I think, all the way on the high line of the 14, making up for that bad grid position. Your series leader is in the hunt. And also got to throw a shout out to the 27 of Robert Pearson. He is in third, trying to hang with the riders who have dominated the miles the last couple of years. The four of Smith and the one of Mees. Can they break away? No, oh, they're definitely not, because look at this. Bauman's already there. What I've really noticed about Jared Meese all day is he's been so smooth, so confident on that factory Indian motorcycle, already starting to stretch a gap on Smith and Bauman. Way around the outside goes Bauman. What a rebound. A crash right there in his semi sent him way back. He has made up those positions. Oh, Smith's not going to lay down, though, in a mile. He's right back around the 14. Side by side, down the front straightaway. Smith, Bauman into turn one. Bauman in deep. Oh, can he hold it? Ooh, he almost went down again. Way too wide now. Boy, he is letting it all hang out. Briar Bauman not scared to hold the throttle on longer than anybody else. Unfortunately, big mistake. He's back to eighth. Just got passed by Halbert in the 69. Going to get Halbert back now again using the high line. And Henry Wiles in the 17. He's going to clear him as well. So he's just moving through the field at will. Wiles gonna fight back on the inside, not able to hold it. Shout out, by the way, to the 21, Steven Vanderker. Haven't seen him in a while. And here he is running in a podium position ahead of Factory Harley of Vanderkoy in the 20. And Bauman's back right there, ahead of Pearson on the 27. Briar Bauman seeing his teammate, Jared Meese, starting to stretch it on everybody, starting to send in a little panic here. He's gonna throw it into turn three. Around the outside of everybody again, the easiest way to make passes go where they're not. Man, he is not scared. Let's send it to Kristen. Jared Meese said without mile testing this offseason, they have to really build on what they developed in 2018. He also said you can't make quick, abrupt moves here. Being smooth will pay off. Meese also, he was the quickest in first practice in qualifying today. Well, smooth is the specialty of Meese, who has moved out on Brian Smith. Vanderker. Former champion of the singles class. Man, what a performance just showing up here and running with the top riders. And here's Bauman again <laughs> on the outside. Bauman trying to get the top rolling on everybody. Can he get the drive this time off of turn four? He can. He clears Brian Smith. Brian Smith looks over and said, where did Briar Bauman come from? Yeah, that's way beyond the peripheral vision. That's how high up he's going. Smith going to try to get it back. Nope, Bauman holds him off. So your points leader has clawed his way to the number two spot. That's good, but he wants to be great. You know he wants to try to run down Mees. You don't want to give Jared Mees any momentum in this championship. Uh-oh, here comes Brian Smith. Oh, a rider is down. That is Brandon Robinson, second in the championship, who's down. And the wheel and caution lights are on. Red flag, we are headed toward a restart, so that means Mees' lead is gone. Bauman's going to line up right behind him. Now, let's see. I hope Robinson's OK. It looks like he's trying to get back to his feet, but we'll have a replay to try to figure out what happened. The man has already won two races this year. There's the 44. On board with Sammy Halbert, looking at Brandon Robinson. Just looks like he loses the rear of the bike, goes down. Bike rolls on top of him. Hopefully, he's OK. Now, Robinson is OK. He's able to get back into the race. Going to start at the back of the field, but we have actually heard that Sammy Halbert's bike has had a problem, and he is not going to be part of the field for this restart as Mies lines up just ahead of Brian Smith and Briar Bauman. So they've got another shot at Mies now, who had built up a lead. Oh, Smith does not get the jumps. He's going to go from second to about sixth. Into turn one there. Henry Wiles actually gets a great restart. From sixth to second, he goes. Down the back straightaway, Jared Meese already starting to stretch out. Brandon Price, he has an issue. He's pulling off the racetrack. Uh, one of the rookies in the Twins division, former contender for the title in our singles class. Battle is on right now. Everyone trying to stick with Henry Wiles, who wants to keep Jared Meese in sight. Watch out for the number five, the Estenson Yamaha of Jake Johnson. First call for him, who's in the thick of it. Vanderker on the 21, the 14 of Bauman. 
but no matter what they do, Mies is able to pull away. Jared Mies just leaving where he left off before the red flag, goes into turn two, already starting to stretch it. Five bike length lead over Henry Wiles. Another rider to watch, Bronson Bauman running the same high line on the 37 that his brother was on the 14. He is moving toward the front of the pack. Smith on the four, the 14 of Bauman and Vanderkor on the 21. They have been this close this entire race. Can they work together to try to get to the leader? Briar Bauman off a of turn four there. Side by side again with Brian Smith into turn one. We already know Briar Bauman will hold the throttle on longer than anybody. Rolling to the outside, clear. Now remember, Sammy Halbert was not joining the field for our restart. Kristen tracked him down to find out why. Following the red flag, Sammy Halbert removed himself from contention. Sammy, what prevented you from starting in that second main event? Yeah, the, the flywheel cover seal broke, unfortunately. Um, so there was leaking oil all over. We tried to fix it, just didn't, wasn't able to get it fixed in time. So the guys will uh, make a change so that doesn't happen again. Uh, definitely, definitely a bummer, um, but you know, that's racing. Sometimes things are out of your control. Just gotta roll on to the next one. Rolling on is Brian Smith. He and Bauman ganging up on the 17 of Wiles. And they're all watching Mies disappear just fractions of a second each time around. Okay, now Bauman has cleared Smith enough to fully concentrate in the 17 and try to make the move for second. Briar Bauman into turn three, working that same line around the outside of Henry Wiles, up to second. Gonna really have to chase down Jared Mees that's already stretched out to over a second and a half. Well, Bauman certainly knows he has places to pass on this track. The question is, can he get close enough to Mees to utilize it to get the lead as Smith now goes underneath the 17 and takes over third from Wiles. So here we go. Who's gonna catch Jared Mees? Your points leader who's in second, his old rival and the mile master in third, maybe Wiles, or is Mies just out front cruising? Stretch run in the first mile race of the season for American Flat Track. It is all about the draft, and it has taken this entire race for the 14 of Briar Bellman to get close enough to draft the leader, Jared Mies. The fight is on now. The number four, Brian Smith, close, not quite close enough yet. Briar Bauman down the front straightaway here. He's been riding that factory Indian so hard into these corners, tossing the rear end in. Brian Smith needing a mistake from the front too, probably to have a shot to win this race. Off a of turn two here though, Jared Mees is cool as ever. Bike not moving around at all, saving that rear tire. So how is Bauman able to do this? He was 11th on the grid to start this thing. He had all sorts of adversity. How did he make this gap up? Briar Bauman has really rode his bike as hard as possibly he can. We see him throwing it into the corners, using all the racetrack, running a second groove compared to where most of the competitors are riding. Here in the draft, we can see he's run down over the last 10 laps, over a second to where he's right on the back of Jared Meese's rear tire. But we are not seeing him use that high line to try to make the pass now. Is he waiting? Is it not there anymore? What's the difference? Because he was making passes at will until he got to Mies, and we haven't seen it since. Well, into turn three here. As you it. speak of it, he tries it, holds it off a little bit. I think right now he's testing, seeing where Jared Mies is strong, saying, where do I need to make the pass? I might only get one opportunity at this. I have to make the most of it. And look at the KG veteran back there in third. If these two are going to wait on each other, he's not. Brian Smith has scratched and clawed his way back into the battle, and now, the 14 decides it's go time, and he uses that high line to get the lead. Three to go. Briar Bauman says, it's now or no never. I got to get away from Jared Mees, but we see the draft on the back straightaway. Jared Mees into turn three. Oh, doesn't quite get him. Oh, yeah, I thought he had it. This is so pivotal right now. Bauman on the factory motorcycle this year, leading the points. He's actually got the champ against the ropes in the series. Mies has to try to answer back, and he does. Jason, that's a huge pass right there. He was testing out Briar Bauman. He came off turn four, easily passed him before the start finish line. He'll hold that in his memory now, knowing if I have to make a move, I can get the job done. 
before the start finish line without a problem. So how does Bauman play it? Does he try to retake the lead? Does he want to be sitting in second off a of turn four as the checkers come into sight? And how about this 21 of Vanderker has not faded one bit. He's once again challenging Smith for the podium. Wow. Brian Smith two laps ago was looking at a chance to win this race. All of a sudden, he's got to worry about just being on the podium now. Two to go. Mies and Bauman, the teammates. Championship might go between one of these two. It counts for points. It counts to the medal game. I'm loving the way this is playing out. Briar Bauman right now hasn't been able to make another move on Jared Mies. Has Jared Mies turned up the wick that little bit where Brian Bauman can't get around him? Or is he just playing the waiting game till the last lap? Well, we are going to find out right now because they're headed down the front stretch out of this corner, and then we will see the white flag. Mies and Bauman, it is on here at the Red Mile. I'm starting to notice Jared Mies even straighter off the corner. Does he have a little bit more rear tire? We know Briar Bauman has had to do everything he can to make up for where he started. Right now into turn one, he throws that bike in there off of turn two. Can he get around Jared Mies? Back stretch. Vanderkor with a chance to draft for third. Bauman with a chance to draft for the lead. Here it is. He's going to run that high line. Will it be enough? It's not. He gets right up behind Mies. Not going to use the high line. Instead, going to go to the draft. Crowd comes to life. The race for the checkered flag here in Lexington. And Jared Mies takes his second win of the season. Smith. In his return to racing after a couple of weeks off to test and tune the motorcycle is third. The teammates congratulate each other. Smith's happy to be back. Vandercourt, great run for fourth. That was a big one for me is to show that he's still the guy you got to go through to win these races. That right there might just change the championship. If Briar Bauman beats Jared Mees there, it sets a tone for the rest of the year. Jared Mees on his racetrack that he's won two in a row, now make it three. And let's show you the Motul move of the race. It's how we retook the lead. Yeah, this is such a key pass because you see how easy he got to the start finish line ahead of Briar Melman. I think as soon as he did that, he knew he was safe to probably win this race. And then Bauman tried to do the same. It didn't happen. Yeah, down the straightaway here, Briar Bauman never had the speed to get around Jared Mees. And Kristen is with our winner. Jared consistently dominant all day long, although in those final laps, Briar kept you honest. Yeah, definitely. I uh, was real kind of conservative on tire, and um, when we had that red flag, it looked like it was chewing up the tires pretty good, so I wanted to be a little conservative and slowed the pace down a little bit, but uh, I knew where we were strong, and um, I let him go by a couple times just to kind of feel him out, see where he was maybe stronger, if anything, and um, any motorcycle was working great. Kenny Tolbert built me and Bubba Bentley built me an awesome bike. The Olin suspension was working so good tonight, and uh, it's good to come here to Ken Kentucky and win. You know, it's our third win in a row here, and uh, so far this place has been good to me. Yeah, he's the only rider who's ever won this race, keeping the streak alive, and that was big in the championship, beating back your series leader, Bauman, who we'll talk to when we return. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Sunoco Go the Distance Award. If we total up all the miles, log in practice qualifying and racing. Briar Bauman out front in those standings, as well as the series standings. He finished second here in Lexington. Briar, your first mile podium in your AFT Twins career. A big night for you, a big rebound, but what was the difference between you and Jared Meese in those closing laps? That's a difficult one to say, actually. I uh, couldn't quite get him by the line, but I felt like we had a lot of corner speed. He uh, said he was saving tires quite a bit, but he was stepped out off the corner quite a bit, too. So I, overall, I'm so pumped. Indian Motorcycle did such a good job. I can't thank the team enough because I was in the air fence a little while ago, and, and now we're on the podium. Um, a lot of people don't really consider me to be a mile guy. I think even Jared. So especially one like this, um, coming away with a, a second place is absolutely insane. And we're racing for a win. So I feel like we won, really. So I can't thank the team enough. All right, so he's still got the confidence. Mies has moved up to second because Robinson crashed and had a rough night. One rider you don't see in these standings is Brian Smith, who, as we mentioned, took a few races off to improve his motorcycle. It paid off because he's on the podium. You want to be happy about it, but uh, 
they called me the mile master, so I should have been battling for that win. Uh, we were just a click off all day, made some huge gains, got on the podium. We're slightly happy, but uh, we want more. Just got to do some fine tuning. You know, we made a huge improvement from the last race and uh, just need a little bit more. It ain't going to take much. We'll be there. And from the mile, we're going to our short track next. Laconia short track, first time event. It's going to be fun seeing him back on the short track. Points battle in both classes, starting to tighten up. That'll show you the versatility of the riders going from the big race track to the small. Great racing here in Lexington. Good battle in the singles division. Mikey Rush just on top. Shana Texter, Corey Texter wins in production twins. Jared Mees wins the twins division. For AJ Allmendinger and Kristen Beat, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.